So I had this whole video already made, right, in the old studio setup, and I had all seven games I was going to be talking about, and I was all set to put it out there, and then it just got delayed. And then two or three of those games came out, and I talked about them on several other avenues. Most of them were crowdfunding. And so let me break down now seven games that I am super interested in to talk to you about now that you should know in the upcoming couple months. It might be the couple coming months of retail, a couple coming months of crowdfunding, a little bit of both, a little smattering of everything else in between, but things that I really have my eye on that I'm going, wow, that really looks intriguing to me. A little bit of everything for everyone. So if you like my tastes in the past, this video is definitely going to suit you. Also, if we haven't always agreed or seen eye to eye, this also should be of interest to you because I am spotlighting things that I think are going to make waves or of note across the board. Let's do this. Now, this may be a surprise to you, it may not be a surprise to you, but this is probably the most anticipated game, one of the most anticipated games, I would say, hype wise, that sort of fall under the radar but is going to emerge out of the clouds victorious like a sun shining on a bright summer day after a rainstorm. And this is Andromeda's Edge from Cardboard Alchemy. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, you may know Cardboard Alchemy from their latest uh, game that came out on crowdfunding, Flamecraft, that raised a couple million dollars, which was a very light, nice worker placement with a very cute dragon aesthetic. Now, you're going, okay, well, how does that tie in, Chris? That doesn't seem like super hype to me. The other aspect of things that you do not see with this is this is Luke Laurie right here in the middle of this picture. And why does that matter? Because this is going to be, not maybe not 2.0, but this is going to be considered the spiritual successor for the worker placement game that <laughs> had the Ark Nova hype before Ark Nova, and that was Dwellings of Elderville. Remember that one? Do you remember that one? That was just a little while ago. This is that in space where you are using your spaceships as your workers, and you are sending them out into the galaxy to explore, to civilize, to colonize, to gather resources, and to just explore in more of a 4X style-ish man. Now, there is going to be battle, there is going to be dice, so there's going to be a little bit of those aspects, but it's not going to be as big, and so it's going to have similarities to dwellings in that sense, but it's going to be different as well, apart from just a thematic incorporation, because you're going to be able to upgrade your spaceships as your workers, which is really, really cool and exciting. And as someone who has a copy of Dwellings of Elderville ordered from the second printing, uh, I'm looking at this one even more so, especially if you get to upgrade your workers, which is a really cool thing. Now, this is going to be one to five players, as it says here, Tableau Engine Building. That's the other thing that really gives me some hype there. And they've already put out an update on the GameFound page here, so if you're really interested, you can start to see a little bit of behind the scenes. And this is the thing I love about GameFound. You could already get updates. They give a little bit of background here. They give a little bit of, okay, what you're going to be doing, bases, alliances, uh, nebulae, planets, everything else in between, the types of things you're going to be discovering, voyaging back and forth between, and also you're going to have to deal with pirates. I mean, right? Oh, but not pirates, because it could also be creatures, monsters, and people all in one. It's testing at several of the bigger conventions that are going on around the country, and so we're going to see where this goes, but... By far and away, this is one of the biggest hyped ones for me personally between now and the end of the year. There is no date yet for this. It's going to be over on GameFound, obviously, but I'm going to guess sometime quarter four of 2022. That's why it's number one, though, on this list. We're just going to stay with that, and we're going to go straight over to a quarter four of 2022 here and go over to the Grand Convergence update for Senko Cushion and the Five Sacrifices. They finally gave a big update that people have been waiting on here. And this is the biggest of big updates in that sense because they finally announced the date of being quarter four in terms of their crowdfunding. I mean, they've had some people affected by the Ukrainian war. They've had some people other have some other issues with COVID. And so they've been affected significantly. I think that's changed the timetable. But now we finally have a <laughs> relative tentative date. And so we'll see where it goes. This is basically... Uh, one of the deepest looking dungeon crawl as open world combined RPG kingdom death all in one style of games that is going to be either a make it or break it for this type of game. The penultimate type of game in this situation. And they revealed more with this Grand Convergence update, which came out about a week or so ago. So you can kind of see a little bit more of what they're doing. And you're going to be interacting with NPCs, taking on quests, 
the time of the world is going to be going on despite whatever you end up doing. And so if you, you know, don't go on a quest, you know, it's, it's sort of the opposite of what you think of as a lot of the open world games on video games, right? If you played Final Fantasy VII and you went on a side quest, the main quest just, you know, sits there until you do it. And if you go on the main quest, the side quests just sit there no matter what, essentially, almost the majority of the time. And they're saying that they are doing and getting rid of that way. So you are going to have to choose. You go into the city, you have so much time, you have so many party members, you can split your party members up, you can all do the same thing, you can go and fight people, you have stances that you're going to be going back and forth between, you have abilities that you're going to be upgrading, you have uh, not only a political system and uh, an alliance system, but you also have a system of, you know, potentially emotional and psychiatric, psychological aspects not only to the battle but can you actually befriend some of the bosses and so instead of fighting them you can you know win them over to your side and that was what has people so excited i mean the art is beautiful for this game it's just going to be is it too complicated for its own good and so that'd be my biggest concern when i'm looking at things that have come out recently especially a few of the awakened realms things uh you know as well as burn cycle from chip theory games just things that, you know, the restraint needs to be the number one key word here. And that is sort of the biggest make it or break it for me uh, going forward. The other aspect of this is apparently there are going to be miniatures that you have to assemble. And that's going to be a big issue for me personally. I'll just pay someone to assemble them for me probably locally. But that's why this is making waves. This is why I'm so excited about it. Is it a high? No, because I just don't know as much about it. We haven't had any hands-on. We haven't seen any. How does this actually work? How does this actually play? What do the mechanics look like? But now that we have a date, it's definitely creeping back up on the list. So that's why it's number two on this list right now. Now, number three is going to be the different one this week. This is going to be Legacy of You from Garfield Games. This is the next, um, apparently, announced crowdfunding campaign coming from Garfield Games on the heels of Wayfarers and the South Tigris. And this is a completely different aspect, a completely different way that they're going. And this is a completely different game for me personally, because this is a solo only game where you are defending your village. Now, why are you fighting like a water dragon? Well, you are defender of your village in a fully resettable, non-linear campaign game. Again, those are very interesting elements to link together where you are defending your village by building canals, trying to keep the floods from overwhelming it while doing resource management a la worker placement ask by. If that wasn't enough, here with a little bit of the symbology, you're going to also be fending off barbarians from your village. You're going to be upgrading your village. You're going to be, you know, unlocking additional gameplay as story elements and having some narrative that goes along with that to make it make sense. There's another interesting element here that I'm intrigued to see how they're going to actually make it work from a mechanical standpoint is a self-balancing system. So if you're doing really well, if you're doing really poorly, it's going to balance it out so that you're getting a better experience, a tougher experience, an easier experience, a more mitigatable experience, whatever you need to sort of streamline it a little bit better. And so that's really intriguing to me because... Not just looking at it from this game, I realized I had my microphone halfway across this table, and that's why the audio changed in case you're wondering, but where you could adapt this system in future games going forward. And so that is really cool. I'm not a solo person. I'm flat out say that, but I have played a lot of games solo uh, you know, in the last year, trying to learn games for the channel, learn games to teach people uh, to play them, and just to experience them also as a solo game. And if you give me my preference, my options, I don't want to play solo primarily. That is not my first or second option. But if I have the ability to do so, and it's allowed me to get games to the table that I would not otherwise be able to get to the table sooner, faster, easier, well, color me intrigued. And would this be potentially my first game that I would be looking at from a solo aspect? Yeah. And that's also what this game brings, is it brings that interest from people like me. So that is why it's number three. Number four is going to be a departure. And now the first three games on this list were all crowdfunding, potentially going sometime later this year. Now the fourth game on this list is going to be slightly different. And that's a game that is actually already available at retail, but is mostly sold out and kind of got hit up with the uh, UK conventions and then a couple of the local uh, big conventions here in North America. And that's the Guild of Merchant Explorers from AEG. It gives me very similar vibes to Voyages, the print and play from the end of 2021 uh, from Postmark Games, which was an absolute smashing success. It looks very similar to the layout and the roll and write sort of scenario that you have, only what you're going to be doing is you're going to be laying out a map just like uh, the Voyages, but your trail is not going to be persistent and you're going to be laying outposts and things along the way in order to manage resources and a little bit of, I believe, even pick up and deliver set collection. So it's different as well at the same time. The other really, really good aspect that I like 
in this compared to a lot of other retail games is AEG actually has this rule book up on their website already. And this was at the time of release. So if you want to know what this game plays like, if you want to know what it looks like without having to watch someone's video, go read this 10 page rule book and you'll know. And as someone who reads literally like a dozen rule books a week right now for crowdfunding campaigns, this is a very easy read. So I suggest that you check this one out. You can get a better sense of the game, better sense of progression. And the difference between this and Voyages is Voyages is just a one shot, like, you know, 12, 14 rounds and you're done. This is playing several rounds and making your path away across it. But if you don't establish settlements or cities, well, then you're going to be stuck in the same places and you're going to be able to not do the full extent of what you're going to be able to do. I've seen this get a lot of media hype. There are a lot of social media copies, review copies sent out to other content creators. So there's been a lot of hype on it already. But with my experience with Voyages, that's why I was mainly interested because it looks like sort of a next level Voyages. And I give Voyages as much praise as I can because it is the best value crowdfunding game I have ever bought or played or tested in any sense in that way. And the best price per fun game, I think you can argue that's in my collection because I think I paid $5 for it. So that's amazing. If this is a board game that can produce half of that level of fun, and judging by the uh, ranking already here on Board Game Geek of being a 7.9 and already almost, uh, you know, breaking in the top 1,000 for family games and 5,000 for the little bit of time it's been out so far, that's relatively impressive. And I can't wait to see what it actually has in store. I believe it has something like four maps in it that you can play. So it's high on my wish list, as you can see here. Uh, it's on my wish list on my board game geek, uh, you know, profile. So it's going to probably end up in my collection at some point. I will probably be messaging these four people that have it for trade right down here after I film this video. So there you go. That's why it's number four. That's a retail game. Now, staying with the retail, we're going to stay right with it here with another one here. And this one, I just put out my review of Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliance's core set from OPK Games. And why am I talking about this? Well, there's already been one expansion released. I didn't even know it was coming out. Super, super pumped. And if you think about it from a Disney Unmatched, essentially, is what it is. Only better than Unmatched, I will argue. That this is just ripe for characters, characters, characters. Think of any Disney IP, any character within Disney. You can see the eight characters right here. I mean, you have Demona from Gargoyles, right? If you had asked me on the ranking of the characters that I thought you would see with a Disney-based skirmish game, uh, and you listed out like a hundred spots, Demona, uh, someone from Gargoyles IP at all would not even be on that top 100 list. And so it is just ripe for the picking in terms of imagination, in terms of asymmetry, and in terms of uniqueness. And with this expansion already just being currently released, uh, give me Stitch. Holy crap. I am so excited to see Stitch from that aspect. And then the second expansion here, uh, Thrills and Chills. <sighs> <laughs> gonna, gonna probably end up in my collection because this game is easier to hit the table than Unmatched. It's a better asymmetric game than Unmatched, and I just like it a lot more. And it passes the eye test better than Unmatched in terms of, wow, that looks really cool. I think I'll try it out. Or, wow, I'm passing that along the shelf in the game store or in the Target or whatever, and I'm really super interested in that. And it's about the same price, and the core will cost you, uh, you know, similarly to Unmatched, but you'll get almost twice as many characters. There you go. More of a great thing. Definitely going to give this one a look-see. Now, we're going to go back to crowdfunding in a second, but one last retail game. I can't go astray with this. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know where I'm going with this in terms of what I like and what I don't like. And ho, oh, King of Monster Island. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Does that look familiar to anyone? It should. ELO is putting out Richard Garfield has gone back to King of Tokyo, folks. This is so amazing to me because I love King of Tokyo. This was literally my second gateway game after Catan. This was the game where I walked into game night and, uh, you know, as a new person and I saw someone playing and it blew my mind. Now you're telling me I can have this as a cooperative game where you're going to be playing all against one big monster on a board? Amazing, amazing, freaking amazing. Interruption by a toddler there for a second. But this is everything that I love about King of Tokyo, only now I can play it as a cooperative, and I am a huge cooperative game fan. You know, some of my best games in my collection are cooperative experiences. And now to be able to play this as a dice checker cooperatively, I am seriously, seriously interested. Now, there's not a whole lot of information out there for it. We don't have an English rules. We don't have any advanced copies, nothing. But I am so freaking hyped about this game. This might be my number one retail game of 2022 or even like 2021 of games like I've just been super excited about. 
Now there's going to be a volcano, something going on with the volcano in the center. You have six different areas. You've got powers that you're going to be gaining. You've got a big potential boss that you're going to be going up against along with trying to not get, you know, I'm assuming erupted. This is called the lithosaur, whatever that is. That's the boss. You're going to be damaging. You're going to be rolling. You're going to be, you know, doing everything you love about King of Tokyo in the first place, but now just with a better version of it in a cooperative sense. You're going to also apparently gain allies, potentially. It's just looking like it's going to be great. I am super, super pumped about this one. This is the type of game that I will pull out with anybody, that you can play with anybody. That's just some dice chucking, randomness, chaotic fun. And now instead of being take that, which is a lot of people's main criticism of that game in the first place, because, oh, you know, I get knocked out and I have to sit there and, oh, man, that's a, you know, oh, nope, now I get to play it cooperatively. And now everyone can have fun and gang up on the boss monster instead of each other. So, boom, there you go. In case you didn't know about it, you do now. Add it to your Board Game Geek wish list right now. Pause this video and go do that and then come back. You better come back, though, because if you don't come back, you're going to miss out on the last game that I'm talking about, which is going to fly under a lot of people's radar, but you need to know about it because it's a very intriguing game coming up maybe sometime in quarter four of 2022, and that is Empire's End from Brotherwise Games. This is a super intriguing concept, right? You're managing a, a, an empire, and what happens is an, a disaster happens. And if you contribute the most resources, well, you lose those resources, but you don't get affected by the disaster. But if you get affected by the disaster, you gain the resources that other people are spending to avoid it. And you also get a unique upgrade to your kingdom having survived the disaster, right? You know, uh, evolution, essentially, if you will, of your empire. Well, you know, you, you, what didn't kill me make me stronger, that sort of aspect. Production, industry, and military phases, but you're having these events and sometimes there will be disasters, sometimes there'll be other things. And you're gonna have to pick and choose when you are willing to take one of those disasters in order to rebuild your empire better the next time around in this reverse bidding resource management style sort of engine building game. That's about the extent of the information that we have. It's from John D. Clare, though, so you know it's coming from a good pedigree. I haven't heard a whole lot, but if you go over to Board Game Geek, and I've heard a few smatterings on a couple other social media sites of people that played it at a couple of the conventions, like Origins, that were really, really impressed. And so from Brotherwise, this is looking like possibly one of the sleeper hits, one of the most solid games, if it really can live up to its potential, between now and the end of 2022. I'm putting a lot of hype in this one because I think it looks absolutely fabulous doing things in a way, again, ingenuity wise we have not seen now john declare uh, you can make the argument that some of it has been a little bit hit or miss you know edge of darkness is definitely divisive dead reckoning as well but they're solid 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 designs and i really want to see what this can accomplish when it comes to fruition so there you go. Those are my seven games that I'm super pumped about between now and the end of the year. A little bit of retail, a little bit of crowdfunding, a little bit of lower player count, a little bit of higher player count, a little bit of cooperative, a little bit of competitive, everything across the board, even solo. So now that I got those out of the way, how do you feel about those games? Anything that caught your eye? Anything that you're interested in? What else do I need to know about? What else has caught your eye that's coming out between now and the end of the year? I mean, I'm going to be obviously talking about it uh, a ton, especially a couple of these titles as they hit crowdfunding. And hopefully I end up with a few in my collection before the end of the year so I can talk about them personally hands-on. So there you go. Those are my hyped games right now that I've got high on my radar. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for making it this far in the video. Stay classy. Have a great day and subscribe if you want. There's plenty more like this where you can find it in the future on this channel. That's all I got. Got a toddler sitting at the door waiting to get in. He's been in here three times during the making of this video in the first place. So I have to go do some fathering. Peace out. Daddy's got to finish filming, okay? Yeah. Yeah. That. Monsters. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes, egg night. Go get mama. Go see mama. Okay, daddy's got to finish. Okay? Daddy will come out in a little bit, okay? Go out. Go out by mama and brothers. Go see what brothers are doing. Can you shut the door, Pan Pan? What a big helper. Thank you, sweet boy.